Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review on The Flash, Season 6, Episode 5. Today we're going to be reviewing the episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Alright, so there is no episode next week, we have found out recently, so don't be expecting a review next week. That episode will come out the week after, so no worries, just one week off, it's not like a big break or anything like that. So, episode 5, it was pretty damn good. I really did like this episode, I was a little bit upset about the lack of Barry and Iris in this episode, but you know, I can deal with it, they do that a couple of times each season, but it really shined on Cisco. Cisco was great in this, Carlos Valdez, man, he really kills it, he is really underused sometimes, and you can tell from this episode. So yeah, it was basically a Cisco episode. We had no Barry and Iris apart from the opening like a few minutes and the ending few minutes as well. So they went on a vacation. I believe they did this last season or it was season four. I think it was season four. I don't remember them going on a vacation in season five, but I have to say it did feel a little bit weird considering yeah, it's been two weeks since Ramsey got away, but Crisis is coming up, and you're going on a vacation, you're going on a holiday. I was a little bit like, huh, yeah, I don't know if I believe that, but that's just me. So, yeah, really it was Cisco's episode, Breacher Returns, I'm not a fan of Breacher, but he was very good in this episode, especially that opening scene, he comes in, he just sits on Cisco's bed, and he sort of just breaks down. I loved it, it was really good. And so Danny Trejo did a very good job, much better than he did in Season 4. I just think, you know, he was a victim of how bad Season 4 was. So yeah, he returns, he does this different type of breaching thing because, you know, he doesn't have his powers. So he sort of like rips open, I guess, the breach between Earth-19 and Earth-1. And it's pretty cool, that scene looked pretty cool. So basically, Cisco starts the episode with him getting arrested, that was in the past. Then we flash forward to the present, sorry, you go back to the present, and we get the big revelation that, in fact, Gypsy, Cynthia, is dead. So that was obviously a little bit expected, but still came as a shock. I was expecting it, but still kind of hits you, because she was a fairly major character on the show, and considering that she's just dead now, like, I thought it was going to be more to do with Crisis and how she died, but I was very happy with the way they actually dealt with her death and so yeah kind of a big shock so she was killed by this supposed hacker called echo so this was like the major mystery of this episode to find out who killed her and why this person killed her so she had been tracking him for years been chasing him around but she never knew what he looked like and so this links into Cisco and he has these sleepwalks essentially he has these visions and it's actually kind of real you know he's picking up this knife or like scissors and stuff like that and then he's doing this stuff it's called breach psychosis so he does all of that and everything and it turns out Cisco has been framed for the murder of Gypsy so Breacher and everyone all the people from the agency, they come over, they try and arrest Cisco towards the end of the episode because they think that he was the one that actually killed Gypsy, but turns out it's revealed, and this was amazing, this was probably one of the best scenes of the episode, it's revealed that Earth-19 Cisco is the killer, he is Echo, and he is the doppelganger of Cisco, so there's tons of multiverse stuff in this episode, obviously with Breacher being here and everything, you know, Gypsy returning for a brief moment. Obviously, it's not the same actor, but yeah, so she gets killed, and then we get the revelation, oh shit, Echo, this killer, is a doppelganger of Cisco. I love the fact we're getting more doppelgangers, because we haven't had a doppelganger in a very long time, obviously barring Harrison Wells, who we get every season, but I'm talking about, like, our main cast, obviously excluding Crisis on Earth X, because that was a big crossover, but anyway, so yeah, of 19 Cisco, he's the killer, and Cisco in the end figures out that he has tampered with some stuff in Star Labs. He's got in, he's planted this weapon that he used to kill Gypsy, and he's used some sort of white noise machine, he's like hacked into it to interfere with Cisco, and I think that is the reason as to why he's getting these sleep 
psychosis things to do with his breaching abilities in the past. I think that was the reason. I could be wrong. But anyway, so he's tempered with everything to make sure that Cisco is the one who is framed for the death of Gypsy. But in the end, Cisco outsmarts him. So we get this massive Cisco versus Cisco fight in that it's really who can outsmart each other. And our Cisco is smarter because he's not going to use a weapon to kill the other version of himself. Obviously, his other version of himself, he has predicted that, yeah, he's probably going to try and kill him if he has the chance. So Cisco like reverse engineers or you know hacks into the gun somehow and creates sort of this force field so when he pulls the trigger he can't escape. So very clever stuff, totally Cisco. I really like that part of the episode where we had the two different Cisco's fighting each other and you know facing off. So in this episode we have Camilla tagging along. It's a little bit strange at points that she tags along to these kind of dangerous missions considering she's just like a kind of rookie reporter you know she doesn't really have anything to add to him obviously she's just support but I thought she was pretty good in some of the more emotional moments but apart from that I didn't really see a real need for her in this episode and I think that's just you know the case of the writers trying to get her to do something because you know she hasn't really done that much since she's been on the show so she's kind of just a tag along character so it's revealed by the end of the episode Gypsy went to Earth 1 because she saw it was Cisco, this version of Echo. She saw that the Earth 19 version who she'd been tracking all this time looked like Cisco. So she went to Earth 1 to lure him there because apparently she was scared and sort of skeptical. She wanted to buy some time. But also she outsmarted him in taking him to Earth 1 so that our Cisco would know about it and that our Cisco would figure out you know who he is and to actually stop him finally so that was very clever i really like that bit let's move on from the cisco stuff in this episode so we had a continuation from the end of last episode we had that cliffhanger with the monitor and this new version of harrison wells nash wells so in this episode we see that wells is still in the tunnel he's trying to dig through you know he's very unsuccessful at that and it turns out joe had been tracking him so he comes down to the tunnel there's a little scuffle and the tunnel essentially collapses on them also they try and escape but then like the oxygen's all messed up so they only have like 42 minutes i think they said to survive and so by the end of the episode you've had a lot of talks between them sort of heart to heart different stuff like that you know they very much so play off each other really well Jesse L Martin and Tom Cavanagh I think they're two of you know some of the best actors in the Arrowverse that we've got so you know it's always good to see them so Ralph rescues them by the end of the episode and we get this interesting moment in that Wells reacts to Joe mentioning the monitor he knows the monitor's real name so he's obviously had some sort of experience so this sort of leads into the idea that maybe he's pariah because he knows about the monitor and everything like that. So yeah, very interested to see how that carries on. But by the end of the episode, the cliffhanger of the episode is that Harrison Wells, this new version, Nash Wells, he knows how to save Barry, he says. That is the cliffhanger of the episode. So they're heading back to the tunnels next episode, obviously in two weeks. But he's got information as to how to save Barry. And it has to do with something to do with the monitor because he'd been tracking the monitor obviously. He knows the monitor's name and he was in the tunnels trying to get through to where the monitor would go in that hologram. So he knows a lot of information. Very curious to see how this all goes ahead. So the final thing that I want to talk about, Chester P. Runk who was the new character who was introduced in one of the very early episodes. I think it was episode 2, I could be wrong. But he is going to return next episode. That was teased at the end when Barry and Iris returned at the end of the episode. So he's going to be with Cecile, I'm fairly sure. And there's going to be some sort of storyline going on there. So that was the setup for that. So that is about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos if you are new. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
icy room. 